Good evening once again, Rush Dad Dixon Vic. This is Rush Dad Dixon Vixen speaking, and I hope everyone had a great Saturday. And don't mind me, I spent the whole, most of the day uh, uh, reorganizing, uh, putting in replacement jars so I can make more room, because some of the jars were like too wide or something. So I bought some uh, more uh, mason jars so I could put all my ingredients in and save some room, so. And I have some tapioca powder and some cornstarch all over me, but that's okay. It's got this is all going to the laundry tomorrow. Okay, so and tonight I'm gonna show you my the next part of my DVD collection. It's the drama section of the DVD my DVD collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here we go. Well, I got some and I got something to drink so my throat won't get dry. Thankfully, this this is a movie that I usually love to get uh, the DVD click the DVDs if it won, won Academy Awards for Best Picture and Good Performances. So this one, this came out in two thousand. It's called American Beauty, which was named the Be five Academy Award winner of nineteen ninety nine, and it includes a uh, best including best Best Picture and Best Actor and Best Screenplay and Best Director. And it's about uh, it's about a couple, a seemingly ordinary couple in an anonymous suburban neighborhood whose marriage and lives are slowly unraveling, from beginning to starting, startling end. It has deemed a flat-out masterpiece. So eventually, uh, this is has a lot of great scenes, and it. it's got over three and a half hours of bonus features. And um, so, if you love a uh, so it's got Kevin Spacey, Annette Benning, Thora Birch, Peter Gallagher, Chris Cooper, Allison Janney, and it is directed by Sam Mendes, who is a who is who is a good director, and if and this is a must-have in your collection. It's a great movie, and and it's and the cinematography was beautiful. Next up is a film by one with one of my fav all-time favorite actors and my one of my favorite directors in it. It's American Gangster, and it stars Denzel Washington and, Ru and my favorite actor of all time, Russell Crowe. And, uh, Venge well, this movie, it's just their second time together, and uh, it's based on a true story. The first movie they did was Velocity, Virtuos Virtuosity. Where it was their very first pairing together and he crow played a villain and which he wish he had a really cute butt so eventually uh this is this an all-star cast directed by ridley scott it has an unrated extended version and the original theatrical version i saw this when it first came out out in the theater on the first night and i just loved it it's in, and it's a and it has a lot it has some deleted scenes including an alternative alternate opening and a fallen empire making American gangster and and some case files and it's a it's an ep and this it's all about armed and ruthless streetwise tactics tactics and a strict sense of honor crime boss Frank Luke crime a crime boss boss rules Harlem's chaotic drug underworld when out when an outcast cop sets out to bring down Luke down his multi-million dollar empire it plunges both men into a legendary confrontation and it's a brutal and brilliant film it has a great cast including denzel washington and russell crowe it has shewetel ejuva i can't pronounce his name cuba gooding jr josh brolin ted levine armand Sa john or uh, john hawks rza um this is a film that you will you'll love it and it is it is wonder. It is an awesome movie. So check it out. This next film. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. This is a. Uh, this is one of those uh, thing. One of these movies that came came in uh, like there was a character playing the same thing a series this one 
is The Da Vinci Code. It's based on the novel and it stars Tom Hanks and it's directed by Ron Howard. And um, it get, we gave, they gave it a two thumbs up and this is the two disc full screen special edition. And it has bonus behind the scenes for first a portrait of a portrait how Tom Hanks became Robert Langdon, the codes of the Da Vinci Code and so much more. Okay, it's about a symbologist and a cryptologist in their heart racing quest to solve a bizarre murder mystery that will take them from France to England and behind the veil of a mysterious ancient society where they discover a secret protected since the time of Christ. So eventually it's, a, it's an involving and intriguing and it's a first rate thriller. And um, this is like a dra like more of a drama movie, thriller, action, all that. So it also stars Audrey Tattoo, Ian McKellen, Alfred Molina, Jurgen Porochinov with Paul Rennie, Paul Bettany and John Reno. And it is directed by Ron Howard. So this is a it was a great movie and I just loved it. Here's an, and this is another one of Rob, a collection of Robert Langdon. This is called Angels and Demons, and uh, it has Tom Hanks and Ron Howard have topped the Da Vinci Code in every way imaginable. So, and the twist at the end will blow your mind. Okay, so, um, and it's got special features of, uh, so a lot, lot you need to know. Um, it's a follow-up to the Da Vinci Code. It, the It's about the expert symbologist uh, pursues ancient clues on a heart racing hunt through Rome to find the four cardinals kidnapped cardinals kidnapped by the deadly secret society the Illumin, illuminati with the car, when the with the cardinals lives on the line and the camerlet and the camerlango desperate for help he he embarks on a non-stop action packed race through sealed crypts dangerous calicombs and the most secretive vault on earth so eventually, this is another one directed by Ron Howard. It also has Ewan McGregor and some other some other actors in it. And so this, I saw this at the theater the day before my birthday, uh, 10 years, about 10 years ago. So eventually, uh, like back in 2009. So eventually, this is another good one. I haven't seen the third Robert Langdon one yet, but... I think I'm going to check it out. So so here's, if you love Tom Hanks, if you love The Da Vinci Code, then you'll love this movie. This, this another movie is just so good. It's a great, this is a film, this is a special edition director's cut. It's called Any Given Sunday. And it's, uh, it's it has an all-star cast. And it's a mostly about put football and it stars Al Pacino, Dennis Quaid, Jamie Foxx, Cameron Diaz, James Woods, and LL Cool J. And it's mostly about um, music and all that. And um, it's about, about music and uh, and it's about football and all that and the, and the lives of football players in the movie. So if you love football and if you love um, uh, if you love uh, other stuff, um, check out any given Sunday. Next one is another Ron Howard, Tom Hanks co compilation. This movie it came out in 1995. I love this movie. It's one of my top of my all time favorites. It's called Apollo 13. And this is the two disc anniversary edition full screen Houston. We have a problem. And it's got a lot of special features and, uh, yeah, it's it's an inspiring and riveting story of, of the real life space flight that gripped a nation and changed the world. And it has a got never before seen bonus materials. The uh, it has mm -hmm. yeah, it has it's got a lot of spe all new digitally remastered picture. It's got a lot of special features. It also stars Ed Harris, Bill Paxton, God rest his soul, Kevin Bacon and Gary Sinise. And uh, this this was nominated for a bunch of Oscars. And this is if you love space, if you love want to believe in Tom, love Tom Hanks, and based on a true story, this is Jim the life of Jim Jim Lowell, how how he captain 
how he got got Apollo 13 how he how Apollo 13 was uh, was uh, that the flight was uh, failed so uh, this is a great movie you gotta see this This is another one of Ron Howard and Russell Crowe's. Uh, this is their first pairing together, and I think it, it was marvelous. It won four Academy Awards, including Best Picture, but got robbed for Best Actor. And it's the two-disc awards edition. It's a full-screen version, and it stars my favorite actor, Russell Crowe, and the movie is A Beautiful Mind. And it's a beautiful mystery, and it's the... It's the it's a it's about a brilliant it's a true story of a brilliant mathematician on the, john nash on the brink of international acclaim when he becomes entangled in a mysterious conspiracy not only now only his devoted wife help can help him in this powerful story of courage passion and triumph i saw that when it came out in the theaters i loved it it was sad emotional some few uh suspenseful parts but but Russell Crowe played a, an ama he did an amazing job as John Nash. And he and his wife Alicia had a very beautiful love story and um, and, they, and and unfortunately, like think about five years ago or something like that, they were both they were both killed in a car accident together. at least they weren't alone. So a beautiful mind is uh, also play also with the late Christopher Plummer, God rest his soul, Ed Harris and Jennifer Connelly, who won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Now, this this is a wonderful movie and this is a must have in your collection. This is a film directed by Darren Aronofsky, and it won uh, Best Actress at the Oscars. And um, this is a film that I, I just loved it when I first saw it. We were, my friend and I were supposed to go see the Green, the Green Lantern or the Green Hornet or something like that, but I had passes and uh, they weren't good for that. So we both decided to go see Black Swan, and we loved it. And it starred Natalie Portman in in her best actress role. Uh, it's called Black Swan, and um, it is it has special features, some special features, and um, it's about a stunningly talented but dangerously unstable ballerina on the verge of stardom, pushed to the breaking point by her driven artistic director and the third post by a seductive rival dancer. Her tenacious grip on reality starts to slip away, plunging her into a waking nightmare. So, um, if you love Natalie Portman, Darren Aronofsky, he did an amazing job directing this film. And it was, and this, it's a masterpiece. And it is such a good film. Natalie Portman deserved the Oscar and she did it. Yeah, and because she did a phenomenal job. This is a film. This is uh, Mel Gibson's directorial debut, and it won uh, it won five Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director. And it's a special collector's edition, and it's called Braveheart. The music was beautiful. The music was wonderful, and I look. And it's about every man dies, not every man really lives. And uh, Mel Gibson, he was amazing in the role. It's about uh, it's about the life of William Wallace, a bold Scotsman who used the seal of his sword and the fire of his intellect to rally his countrymen to liberation from the English occupation of Scotland. It's also got special features, to orig two original theatrical trailers, the tale of William Wallace, and it's a, it's an exhilarating new fashion epic, fashion epic, and Mel Gibson, um, yeah, the music of James Horner, God rest his soul. Like, uh, he, Randall Wallace uh, wrote wrote the screenplay, and of but this is it's a long movie, but it was a well deserved Oscar win, and 
the scenery, the setting was beautiful, the music was beautiful, and um, and this this movie, this is a must movie, a movie you must see. This is a film directed by Clint Eastwood. It's one of my favorite romantic movies of all time. It also stars Meryl Streep, and the film is called The Bridges of Madison County. It is a beautiful, wonderful film. The music was good. The scenery was beautiful. And it's about a, a lonely housewife who, who has a, who and her husband and her, ki her family's away at a state fair for a week. Um, she meets this photographer for National Geographic magazine, and then they started bonding, and then they ended up having an affair. And it was a beautiful love story, but like, and it's about. And it's really, really sad as well. So because it's about following your heart and making the right choice. So eventually, if you love romance, you love Clint Eastwood, you can all you can get just just you have to see Bridges of Madison County. It is so romantic. This this movie is a three time Academy Award winner which got one for best screenplay and best director, but it got robbed of best picture. When I first saw the movie, I, it was, it, I loved it. It was beautiful. The scenery was beautiful. It was filmed in Calgary and the mountains were beautiful. And um, it's got a great stellar cast. And the film is called Broke Back Mountain. It was directed by Ang Lee, who did Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And it's the best film of the year. It's got some bonus features, and um, and it's a it's a it's a sweeping epic that explores the lives of two young men, a ranch hand and a rodeo cowboy, who meet in the summer of 1963 and unexpectedly forge a lifelong connection. The complications, joys, and heartbreak they experience provide a testament to the endurance and power of love. Yeah, so um, like it. This is not just a. Uh, it's not about a. It's not just a love story. It's about uh, uh, figuring out who you re like. It's about finding yourself and knowing who you really are. And and it's just this is an unforbidden love story. And this and stars the late great Heath Ledger. I loved him. He was got taken too soon. Jake Gyllenhaal, Anne Hathaway, and Michelle Williams. So eventually, uh, this is another. This is a movie you should have in your collection, and uh, so eventually, so um, if you love Brokeback, if you love the mountains and cowboys and all that, you should get Brokeback Mountain. This is a Tom, Tom Hanks and uh, and it's a directed by Robert Zemeckis. This is his their second uh, uh, pairing together. Uh, this movie is called, it's a special edition to the set. set. It's called a uh, Castaway. And it was like, it's, it is, it's a riveting adventure of body and spirit and discovered the unforgettable journey of hope, courage, and survival. It's got bonus features. Uh, it's got the Charlie Rose show. It's about, and they got this featurettes, vignettes, first look trailer and TV spots and uh, it's about a FedEx systems engineer who's ruled by the clock existence abruptly ends when a harrowing plane crash leaves him isolated on a remote island as he struggles to survive he finds that his own personal journey has only just begun so Tom Hanks was mo mainly solo in the solo in this film and um, it also stars Helen Hunt but eventually, it was it's a beautiful it's a, it was a lovely it was a sad movie but and um, he was phenomenal that he Tom Hanks lost a lot of weight he 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 grew this wild beard and his hair was like blonde and curly and all that so eventually um, this this is a remarkable movie you must see it. This is another Academy Award winning film and it won for best adapted screenplay and best supporting actor that is based on the novel. 
and it's called The Cider House Rules. It was directed by Lassie Hallstrom, and it's a Merrimax Collector's Series, and it's got uh, bonus materials, and, and it's one of the best pictures of the year. Um, it's, a, it's a compelling and heartwarming story about how far a young man must travel to find the place where he truly belongs. Uh, uh, um, belongs. He, he has lived in nearly his entire life within the walls of St. Cloud's Orphanage in rural Maine. Though groomed by its proprietor, by his pro proprietor to be a successor, Homer nonetheless feels the need to strike out on his own and experience the world outside. Then while working at an apple or orchard, he falls for the beautiful candy and learns some powerful, powerfully and delible lessons about life, love, and home. Based on John Irving's best-selling American classic and featuring a sensational all-star star cast, this entertaining motion picture can earn raves from critics and movies, moviegoers everywhere. So this is an, another epic movie. So, And if you love reading the Cider House Rules, you'll love the movie. This is another of Russell Crowe and Ron Howard's... Uh, uh, another collaboration together and this one this is their second one and it's based on a true story it's called a uh, Cinderella man and it also and he plays John John Braddock okay uh, okay Jim Braddock and Renee Zellweger plays his wife in the film and it's one of the best movies ever made and um, it's a triumphant powerfully inspiring true story in a time when the world needed a champion, an unlikely hero would arise, carrying the dreams of millions on his shoulders and bringing people everywhere cheering to their feet, defying the odds against him and stunning the world with one of the greatest comebacks in history. Jim Braddock would prove how hard a man would fight to win a second chance for his family and himself. So and it's got some like deleted scenes, ringside bonus features, and it was filmed in Toronto, Ontario. And... Um, I'm, gl I'm glad it I'm glad it did because Russell Crowe he's one of my favorite actors and this movie was this was a wonderful movie if you love boxing sports and all that this is a movie you must watch this is another movie uh it's a, it's a beautiful love story I saw that back in 97 and it's a true it's based on a true story and no no it's not a true story I'm only kidding um this is movie. It's called City of Angels. It stars Nicolas Cage and Meg Ryan. And it's about she didn't believe in angels until she fell in love with one. And this is a special edition. And uh, it's about uh, mm -hmm. and it's about an, an angel, Nicolas Cage, who plays an angel who comes back to Earth to, to help out. Uh, a, a doctor played by a surgeon played by Meg Ryan learn about life and then eventually he falls in love with her and then the only if he wanted to oh crap I apologize for this I got an interruption and if he wants to uh, be with her for, be with a more like he was a she was a mortal and he was immortal so and he meets this guy who was about to was having surgery and he says and he talks about that he used to be like Nicolas Cage in the film so if he wanted to be with the girl follow his heart then he has to make himself human in in some way so eventually uh this is if you love romantic movies City of Angels it's it is a wonderful movie and very sad too This mo this is uh, David. This film was directed by David Fincher, and it's uh, and it's won three Academy Awards, and the film is called The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I remembered seeing this movie with my mom uh, about almost ten years ago uh, that I saw that we saw it, and it's a movie that must be experienced. A moment, a momentual achievement. And Brad Pitt does his best work ever. 
and it's about I was born under unusual circumstances. It's about a man who was born in his 80s and ages backward. And and Kate Blanchett as the woman he is destined to love forever. It is a it is a momentual journey as unusual as it is epic that follows Benjamin's remarkable adventure of romance and redemption from the end of World War 1 through the 21st century. So eventually this is this is a wonderful it's a great movie. It's it also has uh, Tajari P. Henson, Julia Ormond, Tilda Swinton. Uh, this is a this is a must have in your uh, must have in your collection. This is a there's here's one movie that has seven Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture. It's one of the year's best films, and it has one of my all-time favorite actors, another of my all-time favorite actors in the film. It's called The Fighter, and it's directed by David O. Russell. And um, it has special features, and filming The Fighter. The Fighter is Rocky plus The Blind Side. Okay. Uh, it's uh, based on a true story. Two brothers against all the odds come together to train for a historic title bout that has the power to reunite their fractured family and give their hard luck town what it's been waiting for. Pride. Uh, Mickey Ward is a struggling boxer long overshadowed by his, by his older brother and trainer, Dicky, a local legend battling his own demons. Their explosive relationship threatens to take them both down but the bond of blood may be their only chance for redemption. Like this is a wonderful movie. Christian Bale earned that Oscar nomination. And it also stars uh, Mark Wahlberg, Amy Adams, and Melissa Leo, who won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. And, um, but, ev but eventually, I'll remember, I'll remember the night when uh, she won the Oscar and I, she, she dropped the F-bomb on live television. I'm like, Whoa! <laughs> and it was on. It was ABC, man. So, but eventually, this is a good movie. You gotta check it out. This is a. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. Um. It's the first. Uh, it's the first pairing of uh, Tom Hanks and Robert Zemeckis, and this is a special collector's edition. It won six Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, and all that. The, it's a special collector's edition, and the film is Force Gump. And when I first saw the movie, like it's they. Some people say it's just about some guy sitting on a bench, but no, it's not. It's about yeah, he play, Tom Hanks plays Forrest Gum, who uh, sits on his, It's life is a life like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. It's the movie that movie triumph that became a phenomenon. Tom Hanks gives an astonishing performance as Forrest, and every man whose simple innocence comes to a to embody a generation. Like it is the I love the sound. The soundtrack is awesome. I loved how F Tom Hanks did a phenomenal job. It's funny, parts sad, and it's got a lot of special features. It's got uh, screen tests, theatrical trailers, uh, through the eyes of a documentary, documentaries, and um, and uh, this this film, uh, like this film, really deserved the Oscar. And um, this is his sec. This is Tom Hanks' second Oscar win. So Forrest Gump is a must-have in your collection. This movie is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's direct. It's the first pairing of Russell Crowe and Ridley Scott, and it won a five Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor. And the film is Gladiator, dazzling, spectacular, and it has my favorite quote in the film: "What we do here in life echoes in eternity," and it's a colossus of rousing action. The general who became a slave, the slave who became a gladiator, the gladiator who defied an empire. And eventually, it, and Russell Crowe is simply magnificent in the film. 
And it also stars uh, Joaquin Phoenix, good actor, Oliver Reed, uh, God rest his soul, Diamond Hanzao, and Richard Harris, God rest his soul. The music in the film was beautiful. It was, uh, it was like it, the music was done by, uh, hmm. okay, I'll have to check, see what music is, by Hans Zimmer and Lisa Gerard. And it, I have, I have both uh, soundtracks of the of the Gladiator Gladiator soundtrack, and this is one of my favorite movies ever. This is uh, Tom. This is film is based on a Stephen King novel. This is a two disc special edition, and it's directed by Frank Darabont, who also did The Walking Dead. For the first two, for the first, who created The Walking Dead. But from Robert Kirkman, who was, and it was Frank Darabont who who, became, who directed the pilot of The Walking Dead. So, and the film is called The Green Mile, and it's a two disc special special edition. I saw it at theaters. It was it was a one. It is uh, I loved it, and it's a brilliant, heart rending drama of enormous power and grace, not to be missed. It's also got commentary. It had a. Uh, it's got a lot of, it's got some good, uh, it's got a lot of good uh, uh, special features. And it says, miracles happen in un unexpected places, even on death row at Cold Mountain Penitentiary. A prisoner with supernatural powers brings a sense of spirit and humanity to his guards and fellow inmates. Uh, in this emotional up uplifting story of guards and captives, Husbands and wives, prisoners, and a remarkable mouse named Mr. Jingles, and on another level uh, of a movie maker and his source. Event like this is a it's a wonderful movie. It also it's got uh, Michael Clark Duncan, God rest his soul. He was wonderful in the film. I loved I loved his character and he really stole the show. It had uh, James Cromwell. Michael Jeter, another good actor who, who left too soon. Sam Rockwell, before he became famous for, uh, for his role in, uh, mm -hmm, about Ebbing, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. And, uh, Jeffrey Damone, who was in The Walking Dead, Dead, played our own Dale. And, uh, Harry Dean Stanton, God rest his soul. But he was pretty funny in the film. So eventually, The Green Mile is something you need to see. <laughs> this, another movie is a good, it's a good one. And, um, it was one of, sh one of an actor's best performances. It, he was nominated for best actor for the 2001 Academy Awards. And, uh, this is a, this is the film was called I Am Sam directed. It's by Sean, starring Sean Penn and Michelle Pfeiffer. Love is all you need. And it's a wonderful movie about the power of the human spirit. And it's about a mentally challenged father who enlists the aid of a high-powered attorney to help him regain custody of his daughter. It has an all-star supporting cast and a spectacular soundtrack complete this unforgettable story of life, love, and laughter. It's got a lot of special features. It has a all-access pass, DVD-ROM content, animated menus, and all that. It, star it was the debut film of Dakota Fanning. It also has Diane Wiest and uh, L Laura Dern, who won an Oscar for A Marriage Story. It's directed by Jesse Nielsen, and this film, it has a lot of music from the Be It has mostly Beatles music because the character Sam loved the Beatles and the Be like they like like he like he named he based his life on the Beatles so. This is a must-see movie. It is, it is a wonderful movie. It's a must-see. One of Sean Penn's greatest moments. Uh, here's a film by uh, Quentin Tarantino, and it stars Brad Pitt. And the film is called *Inglorious Bastards*, and it's a Tarantino power punch. It also has bonus features, extended and alternative scenes. The film within the film and a lot more. Um, it says he, Brad Pitt stars. He takes no prisoners in Quentin Tarantino's high octane 
World War II revenge fantasy. As war rages in Europe, a Nazi scalping squad of American soldiers known to their enemy as the Bastards is on a daring mission to take down the leaders of the Third Wreck, bursting with action, hair trigger suspense, and a machine gun spray of killer dialogue. Glorious Bastards is another Tarantino masterpiece. I thought the film was really good, and I, I enjoyed it. And um, though I'm, I do love Quentin Tarantino, and uh, this movie is, this you should have this in your collection. Like I did see the movie Pulp Fiction, which he won an Oscar for, and um, I think he won it for uh, for screenplay or something like that. He, I think he wrote it. Yeah, he wrote it. Yeah. And then like he Quentin Tarantino, he is a ma he is a ma he is a um, mastermind. Like he also directed Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I just love that film. So eventually, um if you like war movies, then you should get this one. The next movie I'm showing you it's a uh, Michael. It's directed by Michael Mann, who is an awesome director. And um, this film won. It had a seven Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture. The film is called The Insider, with one of my favorite actors, Russell Crowe, and Al Pacino's in it. It has an edge of your seat thriller, a dynamic performances, driving wit and dramatic provocation. It is riveting and shocking and deeply moving. And it's two thumbs up for them. This is the story recounts the chain of events that pitted an ordinary man against the tobacco industry and dragged two people into the fight of their lives. Uh, it's about a sixty. It's about a veteran sixty minutes producer, Lowell Bergman, and who and and the ultimate insider, former tobacco executive Je Dr. Jeffrey Wigan. When Wigan is fired by his employer, one of the largest tobacco companies in America. He agrees to become a paid consultant for a story Bergman is working on regarding alleged unethical practices within the tobacco industry. But what begins as a temporary alliance leads to a lengthy battle for both men to save their reputations and much, much more. As soon as they, as they soon find out, corporate America will use all legal means at their disposal to save a billion dollar a year habit. And as the corporate giants soon find out, Bergman and Wagon are honorable men driven to smoke out the evidence. It's got, it's a wonderful cast. Um, it's a great film. Like it's, I just loved it. The first time I saw it, it was awesome. I, I love this film. Russell Crowe did an amazing job as Dr. Jeffrey Wigan. It also, and it also has Christopher Plummer. He played Mike Wallace in the film, 60 Minutes. And if you love 60 Minutes, you will love The Insider. It get, it'll chill you with its cold hard edge and throw you with its unbelievable twists and turns. This movie I saw a couple of years ago, won the Best Actor Oscar, and um, I just loved it. And I had to, knew I had to get the DVD. The movie is Joker, which won Joaquin Phoenix the Oscar for Best Actor. It was a masterpiece, and it's got some special features. And it's about fa a failed comedian encounters violent thugs while wandering the streets of Gotham City dressed as a clown. Disregarded by society... He begins to slow descent into madness as he transforms into the criminal mastermind known as Joker. And it's directed by uh, Todd Phillips. And it also stars Robert De Niro and Francis Conroy. So uh, this movie is, gr this is a great movie. This is about the beginnings of the movie Joker, of the beginning of the movie Joker. And you're, and if, if, you love, if you're a Batman fan, this, you got to see it. Joaquin Phoenix was... A um, genius in this film, and he deserved the Oscar win. This is another Oscar winning picture that won Best Picture and Best Actor and Best Director and Best Screenplay. And it's a Best Film of 2010, a masterpiece. And it was directed by Tom Hooper. And the film is called The King's Speech with uh, Colin Firth and Jeffrey Rush. And it's um, it won original screenplay and it's a crowding achievement and it's a bit it's an inspiral store it's an inspirational true story about an unlikely friendship and uh it's a, it says after the death of his father king george v 
and the scandalous ab ab abdication of his brother, King Edward the King Edward the Eighth, Bertie and Bertie, uh, Bertie King George who has suffered from a debilitating speech impediment all his life, is suddenly crowned King George VI of England. With his country on the brink of war and in desperate need of a leader, his wife arranges for her husband to see eccentric speech therapist, an essential speech therapist. At the King's speech is in a spiral tale of one man's quest to find his voice, inspires people, and rally the world. And it also stars Jeffrey Rush and Helena Bonham Carter. And this is a gr gr awesome movie. I just loved it. <laughs> Colin Firth deserved that Oscar win. <laughs> this film, this next film I'm going to show you is directed by, was directed by Curtis Hansen. And the film, it's a two disc special edition that I got. And um, it has an all-star cast in it. It's a scene in the theaters before. It's called L.A. Confidential. And it starred Kevin Spacey, Russell Crowe, Guy Pearce, Kim Basinger, Basinger, and Danny DeVito. And it is such a... It is a they have a CD sampler. Sampler of movies and the songs by Chet Baker, Johnny Mercer and the Pied Pipers, Betty Hutton, K-Star, Dean Martin... And it's a genuine masterpiece. And uh, it's a thrilling tale of police corruption and Hollywood glamour in, in, the, in this film of James Ellroy's novel. Three cops, a call girl, a mysterious millionaire, a tabloid journalist, and the chief of detectives fuel a labyrinth plot rife with uh, mystery, ambition, and romance and humor. The film captured nine 1997 Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, and won Oscars for Best Supporting Actress and Best Adapted Screenplay, after scoring an unprecedented number of Best Picture, Best Director honors from critics groups worldwide. So this is this is a great film, and if you love a uh, suspense, I like the the music. I, I enjoyed the music in it. Like it's this is it is a two disc special edition. So. So make sure you like, if you love movies, if you love classics, ep epic films, LA Confidential is a good one. This film, I have, there's a film that won the Academy Award for Best Cinematography. And it's a special edition and it has a great cast and it came out in 19, 1994 and I uh, or 94 and I just lo I loved it when it first came out. It was filmed in Al in Alberta. The scene the scenery was beautiful, the music was lovely, and the film is called Legends of the Fall. It stars Brad Pitt, Anthony Hopkins, and Aidan Quinn. And it has special features and it's a passionate journey into the darkest secrets of love, betrayal, and the unbreakable bonds of blood. And it's directed by Edward Zwick, and it's got a lot, and it's got some, uh, and it got some like great Indian actors, the great Gordon Tatusis, uh, Tantu Cardinal, like, um, like the movie. It it is such a beautiful movie. It's you'll love the scenery, and you, it's a time. It's a epic love story, and so if you if you love things like that, then you must have Legends of the Fall. <laughs> this film um, is stars is based on the best-selling novel by Michael Connolly and it was a film directed by Brad Furman it starred Matthew McConaughey and it's called The Lincoln Lawyer and it's stylish, suspenseful and thoroughly entertaining solid and satisfying and, and it's got special features and it's about a law, a defense attorney in Los An a criminal defense attorney in L.A. who operates out of the back of his Lincoln sedan. He has spent most of his career defending garden variety criminals until he lands the case of his career. A defend a Beverly Hills playboy accused of rape and attempted murder. But the seemingly straightforward case suddenly develops into a deadly game of survival for the lawyer. 
So eventually, it's got a great cast. It's got Ryan Phillippe, uh, Josh Lucas, Marissa Tomei, John Legazimo, Michael Pina, Fran Brian Cranston, and William H. Macy in it. So this is a this is a good film. So if you like the book, you'll love the movie. <laughs> This film, one another of Russell, one of my favorite Russell Crowe films of all time, is directed by Peter Weir, and it's set, called The Best Movie of the Year, and it's called Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. And Russell Crowe looked really dreamy in this film. It is magnificent. It's two thumbs way up. It's the fate of an American, re the fate of an empire rests on the shoulders of one man. Uh... He commands the screen in this, Russell Crowe commands the screen in this spectacular high seas adventure. After a sneak attack by a French warship um, inflicts a severe damage upon his vessel, uh, Crowe, who plays a captain, is torn between duty and friendship as he embarks on a thrilling high stakes chase across two oceans to capture or destroy the enemy at any cost. And it's got some, uh, and it also stars Paul Bettany in the film. And it's uh, based on the novels by Patrick O'Brien. So if you loved, uh, if you've read the books of about Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World, then you'll love this film. This is another uh, romance novel. I've read the book. And it's uh, based on a Nicholas Sparks novel. It stars Kevin Costner, Robert Wright, Robin Wright Penn, and Paul Newman, God Rest His Soul. The film is called Message in a Bottle. It's a, uh, and it's a beautiful story, and it's a lovely love, and it's a beautiful love story. And it's about a reporter who uh, goes on a weekend trip and finds a bottle with a, with a letter inside it. So she decides to do a story on it and to find it. And then it was from this guy. Uh, it's from this from this widower who who lost his wife and he who who lo, who uh, sails boats for a living. Uh -huh. So eventually, um, if you like if you love Nicholas Sparks novels, you'll love Message in a Bottle. This is like a musical drama that's more of a drama. It stars Richard Dreyfuss in his Oscar-winning performance. It's two thumbs up, and it's called Mr. Holland's Opus. And it's one of the year's 10 best. Uh, okay, he plays a passionate musician who dreams of composing one truly mem memorable, 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 memorable piece of music. But reality intrudes when he reluctantly accepts a day job as a high school music teacher to support his family. In the time, however, he realized that his real passion is teaching and his legacy is the generations of young people he inspires. You're sure to find this electrifying motion picture both entertaining and unforgettable. Like the movie was, the movie, the music was wonderful, the story was beautiful. It also has Glenn Headley and Olympia Dukakis in it. God rest both their souls. Uh, Olympia Dukakis, who passed away to passed away today, and just found out great actress. She was wonderful in the film. And if you love like uh, um, epic movies, like uh, um, historic movies and all that, um, Mr. Holland's Opus is the one to go for. Next up is a film directed by uh, Clint Eastwood with an all-star cast. It's a full-screen edition. It won two Academy Awards, Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor. And it's, it's car stars Sean Penn, Tim Robbins, Kevin Bacon, Lawrence Fishburne, Marcia Gay Harden, and Laura Linney. And the film is called Mystic River. It's about, like, it's a great story. It's about a mystery. It's a mystery and... Uh, so eventually, like, it's very, it, yeah, this is a film you have to pay attention to because it's got some good parts. It's got a lot of good parts, and it's about solving a case. It's about the, a case to solve. So if you love direct Clint Eastwood movies, directing them, you're going to love Mystic River.
And this is another Nicholas Sparks movie. Like, it's not one of my favorites, but I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the music in it. It's The Best Love Story I Have Seen in Years by Larry King. It's another one from the best-selling novel by Nicholas Sparks. It is called The Notebook, starring Ryan Gosling, Rachel McAdams, James Garner, God Rest His Soul, and Jenna Rollins. If they gave it a two thumbs up, it's got special features, uh, 12 deleted scenes, it's got featurettes. It is directed by Nick Cazavetes, who is the son of Jenna Rollins. And, uh, Rollins. And it says, behind every great love is a great story. As teenagers, be two teenagers begin a whirlwind courtship that soon blossoms into tender intimacy. The young couple is quickly separated by her upper class parents, who insist that no isn't right for her. Several, several years pass, and when they meet again, their passion is rekindled, forcing her to choose between her soulmate and class order. This beautiful tale has a particularly meaning, special meaning to an older gentleman who regularly reads the timeless love story to his aging companion. Based on the best-selling novel by Nicholas Sparks, the notebook is at once heartwarming and heartbreaking and will capture you in its sweeping and emotional force. So if you've, so if you've read the book, you're gonna love them. You're gonna love the movie. Uh, this next one, I saw, yeah, it's a great movie. It's based on a true story. It, it's a triumphant true story, and it's from director Danny Boyle, who won the Oscar for Slumdog Millionaire. And it's uh, dazzling and perpetually surprising, and there is no force more powerful powerful, powerful than, than the will to live. And the film stars James Franco, who is gorgeous, dropped it, gorgeous, and the film and the film is called 127 hours and it's uh it's it's a powerfully powerfully uplifting true story of one man's struggle to survive against mountainous odds it's about the life of aaron ralston he has a passion for all things outdoors but when a falling boulder traps him in a remote utah canyon uh, the th a thrill seeker's adventure becomes the challenge of a lifetime over the next five days, Ralston embarks on a remarkable personal journey, journey in which he relies on the memories of family and friends, as well as his own courage and ingenuity to turn adversary, adversity into triumph. It is an exceptional film, treats profound issues with unforced wisdom and an uncommon grace. So, but this is a great movie. This is a, this is a good movie to have. Like, it was sad, but eventually eventually it's a good movie it's a good it's a it's a true story this next film movie i'm going to show you is direct was directed by wolfgang peterson and uh it starred uh, george clooney and mark Wahlberg. and the film is called the perfect storm and um it is an it is an awesome film it's about a group of uh, fishermen who go out fishing, you sh go fishing on the job, and then they get trapped by the storm it's called the Andrea Gale, called the Andrea Gale. And so, like, it's a really true story. It's really, really sad. If you love this, like, this is a movie you must have in your collection. I loved it. It was, it was sad, but, yeah. Uh, then they had this... It had a theme song from John Mellencamp. So um, they had a photo mon montage set to the songs, theme song sung by John Mellencamp. So this is a movie you need to get. <clears throat> okay, this next one is one of but this is a film directed by the great jonathan demi god rest his soul who directed silence of the lambs and this is a film it's a, this is the anniversary edition and uh it won the academy award for best actor and best original song and the film is called philadelphia and it's an emotional powerhouse a dazzling achievement triumphant it's got special features, some audio commentary, deleted scenes, a video of Streets of Philadelphia. 
and it says, Hailed as a landmark film that dazzles with deep emotion and exceptional acting. Philadelphia, Philadelphia, uh, it says a story about two competing lawyers who join forces to sue a prestigious law firm for AIDS discrimination. As their unlikely friendship develops, their courage overcomes the prejudice and corruption of their powerful adver adversaries, advisories. And it also stars, it also has Antonio Banderas. And um, this film, it's, it is, this is such a powerful film. It's, it is awesome. It's sad. It's sad. And um, if you love Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington together, this is a movie. This is one of, this was his first Oscar, Tom Hanks' first Oscar win. My well-deserved Oscar win. This next, the next film I'm going to show you, um, it's direct, okay, it uh, stars Richard Gere, and it's called Primal Fear. And, and, it's, and it also has special features, oh crap, just a minute here. Gotta fix this bent. Mm -hmm. It also stars Edward Edward Norton in his Oscar nominated role. And it says, sooner or later a man who wears two faces forgets which one is real. And it serves up twist after twist. Gear creates one of the best performances of his career. It says, guilty, innocent. Those questions aren't too high powered powered for a Chicago attorney to decide. His job is to defend, especially if a case will put his name in the headlines and further his career. When he hears that a penniless altar boy is accused of murdering the local archbishop, he snaps up the case, eager for the media spotlight. Little does he know that it will uncover a viper's nest of corruption, pin him against a prosecutor who is his ex-lover, and test all his skill, judgment, and even his win-at-any-cost attitude. Like, it's this has got, it's got a great cast. Frances McDormand's also in it. She recently won the Oscar for uh, Nomadland. And um, this film, like this film, like it is 96. It, it is shocking. It has lots of twists and turns and it'll keep you on the edge of your seat. Next up is a film uh, directed, by my, directed by Michael Mann. And it is a it is such it is a good film. It's got one of my favorite actors in it. It's called Public Enemies, starring Johnny Depp, Christian Bale, and and Marion Cotillard. It's explosive, thrilling, and suspenseful, and it's like no other American gangster film. Um, it this is inspired by one of the country's most captivating and infamous outlaws, John Dillinger. He it's it's about uh, he's. Depp stars as the charismatic and elusive bank robber marked by the FBI's America's First Public Enemy Number One. Uh, the, and Marion Colliard uh, also stars as the only woman capable of capturing his heart, hunted relentlessly by top FBI agent Melvin Purvis, who played by Christian Bale. Dillinger engages in an escalating game of outrunning and outgunning the FBI, cumul cumul culminating an ex in an explosive legendary showdown. It's a landmark crime saga. And like this is this has got this has got my one of another of my favorite actors, Christian Bale, in it. So this this is a good movie. So this is one you must have, have in your collection. This this next one is a special edition film. Um, it won Best Picture in 1988, Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Screenplay. And the film is his must people who for people who have Asperger's autism and all that it, the film is called Rain Man and it's a and it's funny heartbreaking tender and complex Dustin Hoffman is a triumph in an Oscar winning role and Tom Cruise is terrific in a film that's fascinating touching and full of smart surprises uh, uh, Tom Cruise has just discovered he has an autistic brother named Raymond and is now taking him on the ride of his life, or is it the other way around? From his refusal to drive on major highways to a four minutes to Wapner meltdown at an Oklahoma farmhouse, 
Raymond push, first pushes hot-headed Charlie to the limits of his patience and then pulls him completely out of his self-centered world. But what begins as an unsentimental journey for the Babbitt brothers becomes much more than a distance between two places. It's a connection between two vastly different people and a poignant, profound, and power film, power, powerful film. Like it also has a deleted scenes and it's got some special features. But this is a movie directed by Barry Levinson. This is a this is a must have in your collection. This film, it is an amazing film. Okay, this is next film is an another collaboration of Russell Crowe and uh, uh, Ridley Scott, and it's the untold story behind the legend. It's an unrated director's cut, includes two versions, the unrated and theatrical. The film is called Robin Hood. It also stars Kate Blanchett as Maid Marian. It's spectacular, triumphant, and epic. Uh, okay, it's... Okay, it, they reunite for the untold story of the man behind the legend in an age of oppression and shameless tyranny. An outlaw becomes the unlikely hero that saves a nation and inspires generations to fight for freedom. Fight for freedom. It also stars a uh, Kate Blanchett as Maid Marian. A lot of ladies, a, a lot of ladies uh, auditioned for the part, but the but the role went to Kate Blanchett, and I think she did a really good job as Maid Marian. So check it out. <laughs> this next film is was directed by the late great Joel Schumacher, God rest his soul, and it stars a lot of the Brad Pack. It's made it was made in 1985, and the film is called Saint Elmo's Fire. Is you can always count on your friends. Don't ever let the fire go out. It has uh, Demi Moore. Uh, Rob Lowe, Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson, it has an all-star cast. It's about seven friends, recent college graduates, are searching for a place in the real world. As they face issues of career and commitment, uh, a couple try to save a crumbling romance. A shy virgin hides a love for a reluctant father, husband still searching for goals. A cynical writer who scorns love until he realizes he's in love with his best friend's girl. And a law student obsessive, obsessively pursues an older woman. Uh, and a beautiful neurotic woman paints a poignant picture of life in the fast lane. Against the backdrop of St. Elmo's, their local hangout, they save, betray, and love one another as the only closest of friends can. And so they have, they have the video of John Parr's Man in Motion, theatrical trailers. And this, it also stars uh, Andy McDowell, was also stars in it. And this, this, it's a great film. I just loved it. I love this film. So this is great class. This, I, it brought me great memories. This film, next film, uh, unexpectedly won the Oscar, the Academy Award for Best Picture, beating out Saving Private Ryan. And it also won Best Actress for Gwyneth Paltrow. And it's the it's a comedy about the greatest love story almost never told. It's called Shakespeare in Love. It stars Gwyneth Paltrow, Joseph Fiennes, Jeffrey Rush, Colin Firth, Ben Affleck, and Judi Dench. So I thought it was more of a drama piece than a comedy. It's a comedy drama slash. It's a, and it have a deluxe edition. It's television spots, cost, winning costumes. It's directed by John Madden, and um, so eventually um, yeah, it's got some things. And it's over 80 critics agree, one of the be year's best, and the year's best and most original comedy. Comedy slash drama. Oh, yeah. Try okay. Uh, okay, it's got Judy Dench, Jeffrey Rush, Ben Affleck. It's about a Will Shakespeare needs passion and inspiration to break a bad case of writer's block. A Secret Romance with the Beautiful Lady Viola starts the, wor starts the world's flow where it's flowing like never before. There are just two things he'll have to learn about his new love. 
Not only has she promised to marry someone else, she's successfully impersonating a man in order to play the lead in Will's latest production. A truly can't miss motion picture event with outstanding critical acclaim to match its impressive collection of major awards. Everyone will love this funny behind the scenes look at the gray at the writing of the greatest love story ever told. Yep, it's got like I think it's like comedy drama most most likely, so so it, it depends on what you want to call it, but I call it a comedy drama. This this is a film direct directed by a Frank Darabont, and I've seen this film many many times, and uh, this is the tenth anniversary special to the special edition, and the and the it's another one of Stephen King's novels, Stephen King's stories, and the punchline in the film is get busy living or get busy dying, and the film is called The Shawshank Redemption, and it stars. Uh, Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman in the film. It absorbs us and takes away the awareness that we are watching a film. Watching the film again, I admired it even more than the first time I saw it. It's got uh, and it's, it's got some uh, extras in it, and um, it's about a man. It's it's a, based on a true story. So if you love, okay. It's based on the short novel Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King. And Frank Darabont wrote the screenplay and directed it and directed the film. And it was nominated for uh, Best Picture and nominated for Best Actor. And um, like they say, it was a box office slot, but I thought this film was awesome. It was it was a good story. It's a good story. It's about survival and redemption and all that. So this film is a must-have. This next film is based on the story of Facebook, and it's directed by David Fincher. And the film is called The Social Network. It is screenplay by Aaron Sorkin and directed by David Fincher. It's a brilliant film, a land, an, an, an American landmark, revolutionary, absolutely em, emblematic of its time and place, sensational, a once-in-a-generation movie, a remarkable rarity in contemporary filmmaking, mammoth and exhilarating. Yeah, it's about it's the stunning tale of a new breed of cultural insurgent, a punk genius who sparked a revolution and changed the face of human interaction for a generation and perhaps forever. Shot through the emotional brutality and unexpected humor, the superbly, the superbly crowded film chronics the formation of Facebook and the battles over ownership that followed upon the website's unfathomable su success. With a complex and sense of screenplay by Aaron Sorkin and a brilliant cast including Jesse Eisenberg, Andrew Garfield, and Justin Timberlake, the social network bears witness to the birth of an idea that re rewove the fabric of society even as it unraveled the friendship of its creators. So eventually I did see the film and it was I thought it it was really really good. It was well done. Jesse Eisenberg did a great job as Mark Zuckerberg and this is how we find out how Facebook was created. Uh this next film is directed by Chris Columbus and it stars the first two it stars uh, two great actresses, uh, Susan Sarandon and Julia Roberts. And the film is called uh, Stepmom. It's emotion enormously entertaining. It's be there for the joy, be there for the tears, be there for each other. And it's one of the best films of the year. Wonderful, funny, emotional, and uplifting. It's about a, it's a touching story of unlikely friendship between two remarkable women. Uh, hilarious, poignant boygn in a heartfelt drama so it's about uh so it's about like julie roberts plays the fiance of her of susan sarandon's ex-husband and and they slowly um it's about how they uh how they uh, want, want to get to know each other and uh susan Sar julie roberts susan sarandon were also executive producers of the film so um so eventually, um, this is a this is a this is a really good story. Uh, this is another one of my favorite Russell Crowe films, and has two of my favorite actors in it: 
Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. The film is from the director of Walk the Line, and it's called uh, James Mangold, and it's called 310 to Yuma, and it is um, the best Western since Unforgiven. And um, it says Christian Bale and Russell Crowe deliver Oscar-worthy performances. But eventually, um, like this, like it's a Lionsgate film, it was mostly uh, like like an independent film that turned into a to a cult hit like it's called sars and an inf infamous outlaw and his vicious gang of thieves and murderers have plagued the southern railroad when wade when he's captured civil war veteran a civil war veteran volunteers to deliver him alive to the 310 to yuma a train that will take the killer to trial but with with his outfit on their trail and dangers at every every turn turn the mission soon soon becomes a violent impossible journey towards each man's destiny so if you love the western movies and if you love and this has a great great cast too peter fonda god rest god rest his soul too so this is a this is a must see on your list this is another this is a class a cult classic i saw this film in 1993 and it's one of the year's 10 best it's justice is coming and it's directed by George P. Cosmatos. The film is called Tombstone. It also stars Kurt, it stars Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer. It's got an all-star cast. Uh, Bill Paxton was all, already in it. Michael Rooker, Charlton Heston, uh, Dana Delaney, Sam Elliott, P P Mike Bien, uh, Jason Priestley, Billy Zane. <laughs> like it's every town has a story. Tombstone has a legend. It's a sizzling star-studded cast brings to light the legendary battle to deliver justice to Tombstone. Kurt Russell turns in a gripping performance as U.S. Marshal Wyatt Earp and Val Kilmer ignites the screen as the outrageous Doc Holliday. Together they team up to bring law to the lawless and in a notorious showdown with ruthless outlaws at the OK Corral. The all-star ensemble include, also includes Sam Elliott, Bill Paxton, Dana Delaney, Jason Priestley, Michael Bien, and longtime Hollywood favorite Charlton Heston. God rest his soul. Get ready for an explosive action packed adventure the Wild West would never forget. It says Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer are terrific. And I agree. This is a good movie. This is a this is an awesome movie. I haven't seen this film in a long time, so so I'll, I'll put that on my I'll put that on my put that on your list. <laughs> Uh, this is a movie directed by this is I believe this is Ben Affleck's direct directorial debut. It's called The Town, and um, it's one of the best films of the year. It has special features as well. It's uh, it also stars Jer Rebecca Hall, John Hamm, Jeremy Renner, Blake Lively. And it's one of the best films of the year. And as he, it's about it's a story of as he plans a job that could result in his gang's biggest score ever. A longtime thief plans a way out of the life in the town while dodging the FBI agent, looking to bring him and his bank robbing crew down. In addition to heading an electrifying cast, he also directed and co-wrote the suspenseful, critically acclaimed crime thriller that unfolds and often explodes across gritty Boston locations. And um, so uh, this is this is his first directorial debut and he he directed his next film Argo and I just loved Argo so um if you so this is an action packed good drama this next one is a Steven Soderbergh film it won four four academy awards including best director best adapted screenplay best supporting actor and best film editing and the film is called Traffic. It's got a great all-star cast. Uh, Michael Douglas, Don Cheadle, Benicio Del Toro, Dennis Quaid, and Catherine Zeta-Jones. It's two big thumbs up for the powerful epic. Traffic is a real cannonball, a hard-ass drama that comes out blazing. An astonishing experience. It's the high-stakes, high-risk world of, a, of the drug trade as seen through a well-blended mix of in interrelated stories a mexican policeman finds himself and his partner caught in an often deadly web of corruption 
A pair of DAA agents work undercover in a sordid and dangerous part of San Francisco. A wealthy drug baron living in an in upscale suburban America is arrested and learns how quickly his unknowing and pampered wife takes over his business. And the U.S. president's new drug czar must deal with his increasingly drug-addicted teenage daughter. Traffic is a real cannonball, a hard-ass drama that comes out blazing. And it's an astonishing experience. So... This, this is one for the books. This, this next one, it's the, it's the term, it's, it's is a really good film. It stars Denzel Washington in the, he plays a villain for the first time in his career and he knocked it out of the park. And it's called, and it's the only thing more dangerous than the line being crossed is the cop who will cross it. And it's called Training Day, which also stars Ethan Hawke in the film. And uh, oh, Denzel Washington, I I went when he I some people say he deserved to win the Oscar. Like I remember back in two thousand and two Academy Awards, two African American actors won the top prize, and I think it was one it was it, it I think the door the barriers broke down, and I thought Russell Crowe was going to win Best Actor, but when they announced Denzel Washington's name, I'm just like, okay, okay, well at least. He was, rec Crow was recognized, I th but at least he won for Gladiator. Yeah, so, but eventually, um, so eventually, uh, this is a, this is an amazing movie. It's a must-see. This next film is directed by Wolfgang Peterson. This is a two-disc widescreen edition. It stars Brad Pitt, Eric Banya, and Orlando Bloom. And the film is called Troy. It's stunning, raging excitement, visual grandeur, and dramatic intelligence. And it's it's like Gladiator and all the way movies that are filmed in Greece. It's an action spectac spectacle of weight, splendor, and vast entertainment value. He picks up uh, Brad Pitt picks up a sword and brings a muscular, brooding presence to the role of Greek warrior Achilles in the spectacular retelling of the Elad. Uh, there's uh, two people play the legendary lovers who plunge, in, plunge the world into war. A uh, prince who dares to confront Achilles and a man who rules Troy as King Priam. Director Wolfgang Peterson recreates a long ago world of mighty warships, clashing armies, the massive fortress city, and the towering Trojan horse. In the tradition of Braveheart and Gladiator, Troy is epic movie making at its best. It also has special features in it. It's got a it's got a good cast and it has and it's about it's about a and it it's a hundred and sixty two minutes so it's I think it's close to a two and a half hour movie so so um this is this is a good this is a film if you want to see if you love love movies like that. This next movie is from director Adrian Lyne. It's a drama thriller, but it's 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 basically about a marriage, and it stars Richard Gere and Diane Lane. They teamed up before in the Cotton Club, then they did a did Nights in Rodante, and this is their second film together. It's called Unfaithful, and it's a steamy thriller, it's, and um, it's a scorching, seductive tease of a thriller about sexual passion so intense it consumes everything and everyone that crosses its path. It's about a married couple who seem to have the perfect marriage, but when her chance encounter with a handsome stranger erupts into a full-blown affair, desire becomes obsession and the true price of betrayal takes a shattering toll, pulsing with heart-pounding suspense and erotic thrills. It also has deleted scenes and deleted scenes and all that but this if you love adrian line he is a great direct he's a great director and who did fatal attraction and decent proposal nine and a half weeks uh this this movie is it's really really good <laughs> uh, this is a love story that i saw the theaters back in 93 it uh, stars Christian Slater, Marissa Tomei, and Rosie Perez. The film is called Untamed Heart, and it's a moonbeam of a love story. 
and they de and uh, it delivers a brilliant performances in this touching, honest, and beautifully crafted modern day romance. Um, and it and it's their own unique brand of energy and talent. Untamed's heart heart is in the right place. Uh, it's a story about a diner waitress who is constant, consistently and miserably unlucky in love, and a diner's reclusive busboy who harbors a secret crush on her, yet is too shy to speak to her. But all that changes one cold night when Caroline find, when she finds herself in a life-threatening situation on her walk home, and Adam appear, and he appears out of out of the shadows to rescue her. Intrigued by her unlikely knight in shining armor, armor she tenderly breaks through to his lonely world. Together, the two forge a bond of trust and understanding that ultim ult ultimately blossoms into one of cinema's most unforgettable love stories. I've seen this movie. It is a beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. It's sad, funny, and some parts are funny. And um, this is a film. This is a, a romance, a love story. You must, You gotta. You gotta see it. This is a. This here's one from director Cameron Crowe. Uh, it stars Tom Cruise, and the film is called uh, Vanilla Sky, and it's love, hate, dreams, life, work, play, friendship, sex, and this is all about all that. It's got special features, and stars Tom Cruise, and he delivers one of his finest performances in this unforgettable, forgettably powerful film that reunites him with Cameron Crowe, the director of Jerry Maguire. He plays a publishing tycoon, believes he may have found the missing piece to his in incomplete life when he meets the woman of his dreams. But a fateful encounter with a jealous lover sends David's world out of control, rocketing him on a roller coaster ride of romance, sex, suspicion, and dreams to a shocking final awakening you will never forget. And it also stars uh, Penelope Cruz, Kurt Russell, Cameron Diaz in it. But I thought I thought this movie was this movie was good. And it's a good movie. It's suspenseful, drama, some funny parts, a thriller. Um, like th this is a mo like I really enjoyed this movie. So uh, this is a must-have in your collection. Uh, this movie is uh, I loved it, and it's, it's a directorial debut of Sofia Coppola, the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola. And it's the widescreen collection, and it's called The Virgin Suicides, and it's hypnotic sensual. It stars James Woods, Kathleen Turner, Kirsten Dunst, and Josh Hartnett. And it also stars uh, Michael Paré, who has a cameo, who has a, a part in the film, and I'm starting to love his work, which is awesome. It says she makes a set, she makes a directorial debut and it became the most talked movie of the year. It's about in the mid 1970s in a sleepy Michigan community live the Lisbon sisters, five teenagers whose beauty has bewitched a group of neighborhood boys. Isolated by their overprotective parents, they move like fleeing visions against the suburban landscape, luminous and unattainable. But when school hunk when a school hunk convinces uh, her and her sisters to go to the prom, the boys' romantic fantasies threaten to come true until they are engulfed by, in a stunning chain of events that will change their lives forever. It's based on the acclaimed novel by Jeffrey Eugene Knights. The Virgin Suicides is a haunting mystery which captures with pinpoint accuracy both an era and an age. And um, this is a, like, and it's also narrated by Giovanni Ribisi. And uh, this, like it's a, it gave it four stars and this movie this is a really good movie. If you haven't seen it, it's really, really good. Next film I'm going to show you, it's directed by Oliver Stone. It won Michael Douglas the Oscar for Best Actor. It also stars Charlie Sheen and Daryl Hannah. And it's called Wall Street. And it's got bonus features in it. And um, it's sens sensationally entertaining, a suave knowing picture. And... It's in this riveting behind the scenes look at the big business in the 1980s, an ambitious young broker is lured into the illegal lucrative world of corporate espionage when he's seduced by the power, status, and financial wizardry of Wall Street legend, of a Wall Street legend. But he soon discovers that the pursuit of overnight riches comes, comes at a price that's too high to pay. 
um, great gripping, uh, gripping morality tale about the American dream gone wrong. But eventually, um, it's, it is a great movie. And I also got this, I saw the sequel, Money Never Sleeps, and it, I didn't really like it at all. So, but this one, this is the original one. It's the best one. So I'm going to just, just stick to the original, but the seat, but the sequel, either you love it or you hate it. <laughs> this, this next book is based on a true story, on a, tr on a, on a novel. And it is a beautiful love story. I saw this with my mom about 10 years ago. And the film is called Water for Elephants. It stars Robert Pattinson, Reese Witherspoon, and Christoph Waltz. It's this year's most ravishing romance terrific film full of surprises, star power, and smoldering passion. And it's, uh, it's an epic tale of forbidden love based on Sarah Gruen's acclaimed bestseller. Against all odds, a veterinary student and a beautiful circus performer from a bygone era meet and fall in love with their shared compassion for a special elephant, but their secret romance incurs the wrath of her dangerously volatile, volatile husband. So uh, this is based on the book. I've read the book. It is it is such a good movie, and uh, book. It is a good book, and this is a really good movie like this is it's it's beautiful i just love the i love the film and how holbrook had it god rest his soul he 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 played a good part in it this next film one it says this is the widescreen edition and it's based on a true story it stars matthew mcconaughey the first time i saw it i i cried like there were tears rolling down my eyes the film is called We Are Marshall, and it's if you're not cheering, you should check your pulse. And it's, and it's a football is a game that knocks you down, that expects you to get back up. Life hit the West Virginia town of Huntington and its Marshall University even harder. When it did, uh, Jack Lengel came by to help pull them onto their feet by taking the job no one wanted. Rebuilding the Marshall football program only months after a plane crash wiped out Marshall's beloved thundering herd. He, you know, Matthew McConaughey plays an energetic, compassionate coach of inexperienced players whose changes of victory are slim to none. They'll go to the, they'll go with the slim, and as they do, their true life story of hard healing and football will thrill and inspire you. It's game day, time to play till the whistle blows. And it's got a great cast too: uh, Ian McShane, Anthony Mackie. January Jones, David Stratton is also in it as well. And it's directed by MCG, who also directed uh, Term uh, The Terminator Salvation. This movie is a this is a powerful movie. It's sad and good and, and good in both ways. You're if you love football, you'll love We Are Marshall. And the last one I'm gonna show you in my drama category. It's a is the comeback career of an actor, and it's uh, directed by Darren Aronofsky. It had two Academy Award nominations, and it won two Golden Globes, including Best Song and Best Actor. And uh, it's the actor's name was Mickey Rourke, and the film was called The Wrestler, and uh, witnessed the resurrection of Mickey Rourke in Darren Aronofsky's deeply affecting film, Love, Pain, Glory. And the film is a triumph, you know, as a special feature of the wrestler music video. Okay, um, it's about back in the 80s, Randy the Ram Robinson was a headline professional wrestler. Now, 20 years later, he's performing in high school gyms and community centers. However, a heart attack forces him into retirement. As his sense of identity starts to slip away, he begins to reevaluate the state of his life trying to reconnect with his daughter and striking up a blossoming romance with an exotic dancer who's ready to start a new life. Yet all this cannot compare to the allure of the ring and passion for his art, which threatens to pull the ram back into the, to his world of wrestling. I've seen the film. It is a, it is, a, it is amazing. Like it is, it's sad, but it had some sad parts, but the movie was really, really, it was, it was wonderful. Mm sad it's it's good and um it's got a lot it's got some great parts and um 
but it was sad. It was a sad story, and and Mickey Ward did an amazing job in the role that he did. He picked the right one to, for a comeback career. Okay, so uh, that is it for my drama section of the of my movie collection. Yeah, those it took a little less time than my comedy collection, which was the biggest ever. So, so next time when we come come back together, um, I'm gonna show you my uh, my horror thr slash thriller uh, movie collection. So, and um, I'll be back later for a live screening, a uh, reaction stream of Fear of the Walking Dead tonight. It's season six, episode eleven, titled "The Holding." So eventually, if you have any questions about my blog, about my video stream, uh, please do, please uh, comment, subscribe, or leave me a th give me a thumbs up. But my major rule is please be respectful. So this is me once again, Rush Dead Dixon Vixen, saying good night and God bless.